In previous parts, we discussed in depth ECG leads, that we have 12 leads, six limb leads or frontal leads, and six chest leads or horizontal leads. We create a circle of 360 degrees. Let's take a look at the frontal leads again. According to Eindhoven, lead one, right arm to left arm. Lead two, right arm to left foot. Lead three, left arm to left foot. According to Goldberger, AVR, AVL, and AVF. Remember, in Goldberger, the two electrodes, left arm, left foot, combine against the electrode on the right arm. AVL, the two electrodes, right arm, left foot, combine against the left arm electrode. AVF, the two electrodes, right arm, left arm, combine against the left foot electrode. Now let's put these six frontal leads in the circle and see how they are looking at the electric activity of the heart. We'll start with lead one. It's right here. Lead one is looking at the electric activity of the heart from a zero degree angle. Lead two from 60 degrees. Lead 320. AVF, 90 degrees. AVR, minus 150. AVL, minus 30 degrees. So now we have, for the frontal leads, six different perspectives. Then we have the horizontal leads, V1 to 6. These leads are looking at the electric activity of the heart from six horizontal perspectives. More details will follow. We also discussed in previous parts that we use a positive electrode as the exploring electrode. For the six frontal leads, we have six cameras. These six cameras represent the six exploring electrodes, the positive electrodes, in the different leads. Let's take a look at where the exploring electrodes are, the positive electrodes. In lead one, the positive electrode is on the right, on the left arm. In lead two, left foot. Lead three, left foot. AVR, right arm. AVL, left arm. AVF, left foot. Then we have the six horizontal leads. V1 to six. All of them are the exploring electrodes. The negative electrode is the Wilson terminal in the middle of the chest. So now let's take a look at the angles of use of the ECG for the frontal leads. The cameras represent the six exploring electrodes. Here again, lead one, zero degrees. Lead two, 60 degrees. Lead three, 120 degrees. AVF, 90 degrees. AVR, minus 150. AVL minus 30 degrees. If we add the six horizontal leads, we can evaluate the electrical activity of the heart in a three-dimensional way. Here are the anatomical planes of the heart. We can look basically from all perspectives at the electrical activity of the heart. A short summary. The leads two, three, and AVF look at the inferior side of the heart. Leads V1 and V2, the septal activity of the heart. V3 and V4, anterior side of the heart. V5, V6, lead 1 and AVL are looking at the lateral activity of the heart, the lateral side. In fact, we use the coronary arteries as points of reference to evaluate the electrical activity of the heart and any related pathologies. Here is the right coronary artery, RCA, here is the left anterior descending artery, which is the major coronary artery. And here is the circumflex artery. Again, we use these coronary arteries as points of reference to evaluate pathological changes in the cardiac activity. We also use the ECG grouping in the ECG tracing. Let's start with the inferior side of the heart. Leads 2, 3, and AVF. 2, 3, and AVF. These leads, 2, 3, and AVF, are evaluating the inferior side of the heart. The inferior leads look at the inferior surface of the heart. Usual blood supply is the right coronary artery, right here. If this right coronary artery is affected, or any region or segments of the heart that are associated with the right coronary artery, these pathologies are best seen in leads 2, 3, and AVF. 
Then we have the septal leads, V1 and V2, V1 and V2. These leads are looking at the septal activity of the heart, interventricular septum. Then we have anterior leads, V3 and V4, V3 and V4. These leads, the anterior leads, look at the interior surface of the right and left ventricle, usual blood supply, left anterior descending artery. Remember, this is the major coronary artery. Any segments of the heart that are supplied by this artery, if the supply is affected, the resulting pathologies are best seen in leads V3 and V4. Finally, we have the lateral leads, V5, V6, lead 1 and AVL. Here, lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. The lateral leads look at the lateral walls of the left ventricle. Usual blood supply, circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. Here. Again, any pathologies in this region are best seen in leads V5, V6, 1 and AVL. So now let's discuss why we have in the different leads upward or downward deflections. We will use the QRS complex vector as a point of reference to simplify. Before we delve into the details, remember the rule, the depolarization wave. If the vector is going from the minus to the plus electrode, we will have a positive reflection. If the vector is going from the plus electrode to the minus electrode, we will have a negative deflection. The QRS complex is going from minus to plus, as we will see here. The QRS complex vector represents the depolarization of the two ventricles, in particular the left ventricle, because it has by far the largest mass. This is the electrical activity of the heart, the major electrical activity of the heart, the electrical axis of the heart. Again, to simplify, this is the vector, the QRS vector. Now let's use this vector as an example in order to evaluate why in some leads, the deflections are upward and in others are downward. Let's start with the interpretation of the six frontal leads. One, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. Here is the QRS vector, the electrical axis of the heart in green. Now let's see where lead one is, is right here. Lead one is in the same direction as the vector. So it has to be a positive deflection, but this is not perfectly aligned with the position of the vector. So we have a positive deflection and it's not the strong positive deflection. Lead two is right here. It's very well aligned with the position of the vector. So it's got to be positive and also quite strong. Then lead three is right here is following the direction of the vector. So it's got to be positive, but it's not so well aligned with the direction of the vector. So the deflection is positive, but not as strong as two. In summary, for the Eindhoven leads, the strongest QRS deflection vector is in lead two. Now let's take a look at the Goldberger leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF. AVR, it's right here. It's exactly the opposite direction of the vector. So it's got to be negative, as we see here. Then AVF, the vector is right here, is following the direction of the vector. AVF, the electrode, is following the direction of the vector. So it's got to be positive, as we see here. Finally, we have AVL. AVL, the electrode, is in the opposite direction of the vector, so the deflection has got to be negative. Let's take a look at AVL, negative deflection. We can use the same analogy to evaluate the chest leads. We will see that in the chest leads from V1 to V6, the QRS complex gradually builds up. It starts with V3 and V4, 
and continues until V6. Here we see the QRS complex from V3 to V6 builds up 